you ever wonder what it's like to set up two huge aquariums in one day, you're about to find out. Let's dive right in. All the dirty work's over, we got all the equipment. Let's get some fish. Let's go. So Quinn, how do you feel? I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. Ready? Here we go, let's do it. Sick with rowing while I'll finally get some work in here. Oh God, this is not good. So we hit a huge issue. So our plan today is to get two of the biggest aquariums that can fit in Quinn's classroom just to give them a huge upgrade. That means we are looking for a 75 or a 90 gallon aquarium. Luckily our local fish store here had two 90 gallons available. One is an Aquion, one is a Marine Land, so we're going to get both of those today. One of those is going to be an Embuna tank, the other is a bit of a surprise and we can't wait to show you what we got. Let's ride. Let's go spend some of Quinn's money. Gotta get the black sand for the Embuna. I'm really going to make them pop. So how many pounds for uh, 90 gallons? About one pound per gallon, so we got three 25 pound bags. That should be enough for a 90 gallon. He's not very good at math. All right, for Quinn's monster tank, we're going to show you guys how to create a mix of fine sand, medium rock, and large rock to create a nice natural substrate. And then to get a perfect mix, three bags, three different types, we have the big rock bag. We're gonna mix it all up evenly. All right, so for the Embuda tank, uh, I definitely want some high kind of stacking rocks. So these huge dragonstone pieces, I think will fit perfectly in that tank. Uh, it'll really bring some elevation and will really allow the fish to kind of interact with uh, all parts of the tank and the rocks. All right, so for the monster tank, uh, because it's gonna be probably a Central or South American cichlid, we are gonna use some driftwood. So I'm really liking this piece here. Uh, it should cover a lot of the tank. You want to get one of the smaller ones too? Yeah, I think we'll do a smaller one as well for the other side. Probably this guy right here. Not too bad. And then probably just get a little piece of driftwood to kind of sit in the middle. Alright, so now we got the decor taken care of, the substrate taken care of. Now it's time to get the lighting and equipment. Let's go. All right, so now to choose a light. Obviously we have a pretty good selection of flu ball here along with uh, some Aquarium Masters. Um, from my past, I know I've always used the Aqua Sky. I love that because you can control that on the phone uh, via Bluetooth. And there you go. So I got my 60 on there, my 110 gallon, and then Billy Donovan's Aquarium as well. So uh, pretty cool app there. Really like these lights, highly recommend it. <laughs> All the dirty work's over, we got all the equipment. Let's get some fish. Let's go! All right, so it's no secret that Alec is the African cichlid bro. I've always been Central and South American along with Troy. So Alec, I'm really gonna kind of defer to you here. What are your opinion on what type of Buddha we should get for this 90 gallon? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> All right, so one staple in the Mbuna is the yellow labs. They go great, they contrast really well with a bunch of different African cichlids, and they're also just pretty mild and uh, not too aggressive, so they mix well temperamentally with other African cichlids as well. So the other ones that I know is one of my favorite and one of yours is the Johani. Love the Johani. Yeah, they got that kind of dark blue, light blue, and a little bit of black in them that contrasts really well with yellow labs. So what do you think? I think definitely a lot of the yellow labs, I want all of the Johani, and then kind of looking at these acais, they look pretty cool. They're kind of like purple and yellow. Yeah, and the great thing about uh, yellow to these guys, they're, look at these guys, they just are real active and they're really um, um, interactive with you. And they actually get pretty big and pretty purple too. So that's another color that kind of creates contrast in your tank. One other fish that I have in my eye on, it's pretty similar to the Ohani, but the Demasonite. Uh, I would like a lot of those, and it looks like they might have some over here. Right up here, we got about five or six to base nine, which is okay for the short term. Eventually, you're gonna have to get maybe six or seven more. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be spending a lot of money today. <laughs> so, Quinn, how do you feel? I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. All right, so we finally got all of the decor, all the equipment, and we have the 290s ready to load up. Really excited to get this tank set up. 
huge shout out to my guy August here at Aquarium Inventory. He's a real big help today. Big fan of the channel from what I hear. Yeah. Really appreciate it, man. Subscribe, you're not subscribed already. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You're <laughs> wise, <first>. wise man. <laughs> Ready? Go. Let's do it. Uh, sick with bro and I'll finally get some work in here. I just kind of sit like this. Got to. Oh, mess. Yeah. With sick with bro in law. He's back. I'm back, baby. Rob, are you happy to be back lifting heavy things? Mm, just doing my workout. Tuesday's arms and back. Would rather be doing this than hanging out at the pool. First time seeing the classroom. This is sweet. What do you I can't think? believe it's the first time I saw Jack and Joker together. All right, guys, before we get into the new tanks, just wanted to show the state of the classroom as it is now. So, on this side, there's a 29 gallon, the saltwater 20 gallon, and an empty aquarium over there. So, we're going to make this side of the classroom look much better today. Um, you're going to see how it all comes together. But, Quinn, do you want to show Alec? The other tanks, just since you haven't seen any of these. My first time in the classroom. All right, yeah. let's check them out. Come on down. All right, so we have right here our 110 gallon custom aquarium. Uh, this is my favorite tank. This is where all my favorite fish are. Uh, we have Joker, Green Terror here. Uh, we have four silver dollars. When I put the fire mouth in, uh, the fire mouth is super aggressive and beautiful, as you can see. And the OG Cichlid Bro, Jack Dempsey. I can't believe this is the first time I'm seeing Jack. I mean, this is where it all started for our channel. And I can't believe I'm finally seeing him. He looks awesome. Really, the whole tank for being on summer break, you know, not being here on the weekends and things like that. I can't believe how clean it is, how nice it looks, and how healthy the fish look, too. I appreciate that. And <laughs> as, he, as he mentioned, we are on summer break right now, so you can see uh, I do have an auto feeder set up here. I am here Monday through Wednesday most weeks for football, um, so I don't put the auto feeder on until I leave on Wednesday. So from Wednesday to Sunday, uh, we'll have the auto feeder in, and really try not to overfeed them on that. I just kind of do it enough, just kind of keep them going along, um, and then I give them a more precise handful of food whenever I'm here. The 75 gallon um, here we have our lone giant Danio that's been with us for about four years. We have a Severum, a juvenile Jack Dempsey here. It's a little scared because I just turned the lights on, but he is a showstopper. All right, let's check out the last two and then explain what we're gonna be doing today. All right, so these last two tanks, these are tanks that are gonna be changed today, okay? So we got 90 gallon going here, 90 gallon going here. We're gonna move Felix's tank over to my desk where the empty 20 long is. Um, I apologize for the clutter. I am a track coach and we had uniform turn in last week. Um, so not this, only the tanks, but the room itself is going to get a, a makeover here. Yes, uh, much needed makeover. So as you can see, uh, Felix's tank is a little dirty, but we'll clean that up today, no big deal. Uh, that is kind of how it goes with the summer. Uh, we've had Felix with us since uh, she was a little baby. She is definitely my classroom favorite because she has tons of personality. What do you think of her, Alec? Really good color and kind of a short body, a little different than the typical flower horns you see, but I like it, it's kind of unique. Yeah, when we bought her, we didn't know that she was a short body, but it turned out to be a short body female. Even though it looks a little different than your normal flower horn, it's still a, kind of a special classroom pet, right? Correct, yeah. And then uh, the last tank over here, this is my 60 gallon that used to be in my apartment. It probably looks a little different since the last time you saw it, because uh, there are no more plants in it. Um, I've not really kept up with this tank very well because I knew we were kind of switching things out. So we're going to move these fish out of there uh, into the 29 gallon and decommission this tank so we make room for the 90 gallon. Alright, the tanks are looking somewhat good. The other ones that aren't looking so good we're going to clean up today. And guys, I'm telling you right now, this classroom renovation is going to be insane. So definitely stay tuned. Ready for uh, tank number two? Ready to do it. All right, so the first thing in our order of operations is we're gonna drain these two tanks so we can move them to the other side of the tank so we can put our brand new 90s on this side. Boom, here, here, click and go that way. Boom, that way. All right, so now we got the 55 gallon draining. Now it's time to move the 20 long. All right. The hired gun. 
We'll just put it in this spot just for temporary purposes. Up, up, slide. All right, so we got Felix moved. Quinn is setting up what Rob calls the anaconda, what we call the python. The 90 looks so much bigger when it's on the table. So we're just topping off this 29 gallon, making it look a little bit better. This is where all the different Tetras from the 60 are coming. And then once the 60 is drained, we're gonna move this 90 over there. So we're doing a bit of musical aquariums here, but trying to get the 29 set up right now. Cool. All right, so since the 29 gallon has been sitting dormant for the last few months, obviously there's no beneficial bacteria in the filter. So what I did is I moved their beneficial bacteria, our matrix bag here, into the 75, seeded that, and now we're gonna put this in the 29. This should be good to go. Got a nice uh, periodic table above it. Science. Yes, science! All right, so we're at the hour and a half mark and a lot of stuff has already happened. We did get Felix's tank moved over to my desk. We filled up the 29 gallon. You can see we're draining the 60 gallon and our new 90 gallon is in place. It looks awesome. So excited to see how this is gonna look filled up. Now it's time to rinse the sand and get to skating. Yeah, baby! Yeah. Alright, so this first 90 gallon is going to be for Mbuna. So that's what we got the black sand for. It really brings out the colors in the Mbuna. And so we're going to dump the sand in, and then we are going to use our Dragonstone to try to create a little bit of a slope with the rocks and some tunnels and caves that they can interact with. Okay, so a uh, quick status update. The first 90 gallon is almost full. Quinn is moving the filter from the 60 over to this 90 gallon, giving it basically uh, a full cycle right away because the filter itself has been on that tank running for a while. So as Quinn is putting that filter on the 90, Alec is over here cleaning out the gravel and the sand for the second 90 gallon tank. And then we have Rob over here cleaning, just wiping off the fingerprints and everything from the second 90 gallon tank, which is gonna be put in place in just a minute. A lot going on, so let's keep going. So after having the Ambuna float in the new tank and be temperature acclimated, it was time to plop and drop them into this 90 gallon tank. We couldn't have been more happy with how this aquascape turned out and we can't wait to get these Ambuna in the tank. We have four different types of Ambuna going in here and they all look really good. They've been waiting patiently in their bags to go into this new tank, so let's get them in there.
So everything was going really well. The tank looked amazing. The Mbuna were finally in their new home. And then we saw it. Oh, God. This is not good. Okay, guys, so we hit a huge issue um, with the first 90 gallon tank that we were setting up. It basically is completely set up and we notice a leak. It looks like the bottom corner had a seal break and we don't know if it was just the tank was that way when we got it. Um, either way, we're just trying to figure out our backup plan because we're all here today so that we can all move the tanks and figure out a, a way to get all this done in one day. Not sure if it's going to be something we can do. Quinn's on the phone right now. Um, we're trying to figure out if we proceed setting up this 90 gallon, moving one of the fish in here, maybe all the Mbuna go in here temporarily um, as we get this 90 gallon situation figured out. Obviously the scape and the sand all needs to probably come out and put into a different tank. We considered uh, getting the 60 gallon up and running again that we just decommissioned, uh, but then we run into the issue of Quinn not having help from us if we go that route and he needs to change out the tanks later on this week. So um, kind of a logistical nightmare, obviously not the ideal situation. Uh, we're still trying to figure out what we're going to do but right now. It's leaking pretty consistently So we're probably gonna have to start draining the tank right now the Mbuna just went into the tank So that's also something we're trying to work through so uh, More to come obviously we're gonna try and fill this video with the rest of the outcome here But uh, right now we're just trying to figure out what we're doing Okay, so I think we have a game plan. This is obviously one of the worst situations we could have gotten ourselves into with the leaking 90 gallon tank. Right now, Alec is doing the other 90 gallon, scaping it like we intended. Now we drain most of the Mbuna tank, the other 90 that's leaking. Uh, Quinn and Rob hit the road. They are going to get a replacement tank. If they have a 90 gallon available, they're gonna replace it with that. Otherwise, we're gonna get a 75, which is usually available at big box stores. So at minimum, we're hoping to have this tank set up with the Mbuna in there. Might be a 75 instead of a 90 now, and maybe we'd upgrade it later on, but that's at least the plan for now. We'll uh, get to escaping this while Rob and Quinn are on their way back. Hopefully we can get this all done in one video. This has kind of been a nightmare, um, which was a fun day at first, and now kind of that nightmare. So. Alec, how you feeling? Quinn just had to say things were going smoothly. <laughs> he did say that. Jesus. All right, well, we will get to scaping and start showing that now. Okay, so we have some rocks and a couple more pieces of driftwood here. These have been in another tank, so they're still wet. They might have a little bit of beneficial bacteria on them, which is actually a, a plus. So although our spirits were pretty low at this point, we did move ahead and get this tank scaped, and it did turn out really great. It turned out better than we expected absolutely love the substrate being mixed this way and the driftwood and rocks just being kind of a desolate aquascape for the fish that we're going to be putting in here because we lost so much time with the 90 gallon here in that issue we are trying to make up for lost time and we have two pythons going trying our best um, but we're making progress we have the beautiful scape we had is now taken out of the tank and Alec is netting all the Mbuna as we wait for Rob and Quinn to hopefully come back with the tank. And while Alec is catching the Mbuna, this tank is now full and we have our yellow jacket cichlid floating and ready to go into his new tank. Okay, so this is the yellow jacket cichlid. I think it's gonna be awesome for Quinn. It's gonna be basically like a classroom pet similar to Felix, but it's gonna get some awesome color and kind of be a beast once it's full grown. Uh, about 12 inches full grown. So this guy's only about two inches, but even by the start of the school, school year, he'll probably at least double in size. All right, here we go. Let's see, see if they got anything. Looks like they have a tank. How'd it go? 
dream. You got a 75? And I got some refreshments. Quinn, we've done a lot while you guys have been gone. Yeah? I got a 30 minute power. Anything good? We got one of the tanks set up. Wait, so even the Gatorade bottle has a leak? This is a right. sick joke. <laughs> So I was starting to put together one of our new filters. And one thing to keep in mind with everything that we're setting up today is that we have cycled media, is that we're able to pick and choose bio media from each tank. And we pair that with Seachem stability to make sure that the tank is cycled and ready for the fish. Okay, so the 90 is just clearing up and we have the yellow jacket in the tank. Now we're just trying to finish up getting the rest of the sand out of here. Hopefully get the 90 moved and the 75 put in its place so that the Ambuna aren't in that bucket for too long. So we're gonna put the broken 90 gallon under this table here, at least for the short term until we can figure out what we're gonna do with that and if we're gonna get a replacement. For now, the 75 should do just fine for the Ambuna, so we're gonna get that set up next. All right, scape attempt number two for this Ambuna tank. Let's go. <laughs> that was successful. All right, filling it up again, here we go. And just a quick note on the tank that did break, it was a 90 gallon marine land tank. The two 90s were an Aquion and a marine land and we actually were looking forward to comparing them at some point down the line. Marine land tanks actually have a bit of a reputation once you get to your larger sizes of 60 and above of having some issues with their seams and seals and that's exactly what happened to us. We are 99.5% sure we did nothing on our end and it was purely the tank. All right, so after a long and arduous process, we finally got the two tanks set up. There were many challenges along the way, but we pulled through and we got it done. So I think it's time that we go and take a tour of the new tanks. So I can't believe we got it done, but through all the trials and tribulations and challenges, we did get it done. And I am very impressed with the final result. I think the variety of tanks in this classroom is just amazing. And I can't believe how well it turned out. Yeah, and once the Ambuna tank clears up a little bit more and the yellow jacket grows, which will grow quick and will color up awesome, we will definitely show updates on all these tanks in the near future. So what do you think, Quinn? Uh, I think it's pretty awesome. I just wanted to say thank you to all you guys uh, for coming out and helping. Um, I think that my students are going to absolutely love this and hopefully we can pass that hobby down to them and uh, continue this, to grow this hobby because it's pretty cool. But thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you next time. <laughs>